My name is Jean Marie Heron. I'm a certified professional organizer and the business development manager for the Junk Luggers. My mission is to improve the quality of people's lives through the decluttering of their homes and offices in an eco-friendly and non-judgmental way. If you'd like to see more of these videos, simply click the subscribe button. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this month's Lunch and Learn, which is organized as if you were moving on a dime. Um, I will ask everybody to put themselves on mute until we get to the Q&A section, and um, I will open it up for questions in about 15 to 20 minutes. So thank you all for joining me. For those of you who are new, my name is Jean Marie Heron, and I'm something called a CPO, which is a certified professional organizer. And I also do the business development for a company called the Junk Luggers, which is an eco-friendly furniture and junk removal company that is all about being sustainable, charitable, and community uh, community service, but that didn't make sense grammatically. But we're all about all those three things. Basically, we're all about landfill diversion. So welcome to this month's Lunch and Learn. We will get started, one of my favorite topics. And uh, I called it Organize as if you wanted to be able to move on a dime or live on a dime, because it would be great for, for many, many people to do what I call live ready. So there might be folks that may not be thinking about moving for a long time. There could be other folks that, you know, could be thinking about moving soon. Um, and then there's the unexpectancies of life, you know, like there, there, things could happen like death, like divorce, like the birth of children, like a job relocation. So there's many, many reasons why people may want to live as if they're going to be moving soon. Military, I'm sure the list goes on and on and on. So I believe that having this particular mindset is why we're here today. So I want to talk a little bit about a minimal mindset. And everybody's level of uh, minimalism is also very different. But I have a couple of mottos and maxims that I love to encourage people to live by because I feel like it would benefit them. So I love to say only own what you truly love, use, and need that when you look at your possessions, you want to choose quality over quantity and that you make your decisions by yourself while you can, because sometimes things happen in life and people get sick, um, people physically aren't able to lift things anymore, move things anymore. And what you don't want to do is leave these decisions to other people. So you want to be able to make executive decisions while you can. Um, I also strongly believe that when you live this way with this particular mindset, you live in freedom because you're not so bogged down with what you have and what you feel you might need to do in your home. And then, by the way, um, should you have to move, your moving costs are going to be based on the volume or weight of the truck, depending on where you're going and which moving company you hire. So one of the moving companies I work with, the CEO has a wonderful expression that I love. And she always says to people, don't trash your move by moving your trash, which means get rid of the stuff now so that you're not paying a mover to move it. So there you go. That's my minimal mindset for you. And it's really um, about living with what you need now. So when you're going through this process of decision making and bringing things down to what you feel you would need as if you were going to move, you have to think about where is everything going, but also you have to think about what do I want to keep now? So I'll just use rocks as an example. Let's say you have 50 rocks like in this lovely little cartoon that I have. How many rocks do you really need? You know, could you live with five rocks, 10 rocks, 20 rocks? And can you pick and choose, you know, from small, medium, and large? Because what a lot of people find hard in the editing process or the pruning process is emotionally, how do I make this decision? How much do I keep? And then when I've decided I'm not keeping it, where's it going to go? So something to think about, because if you think about it now, then you can figure out the resources. So if you decided to keep 20 rocks and 30 had to go, maybe they go to the backyard. Maybe they go to the landscaper. I'm not sure where they're going to go, but they're going to go somewhere else. 
I know that every week of my life, whether I have my organizer brain on or whether I have my junk lugger brain on, I'm constantly looking for places to uh, rehome, reduce, and recycle. Uh, just this week, um, I have I found another nonprofit which actually came to me from a client, and um, it's called Ghost Bikes. And what they do is they set up memorials where people have passed because they were killed on a bicycle. So now I'm able to keep all bicycles and bike parts for that particular charity. Um, and I give them to her, but charities pop up all the time and so do resources. So a lot of what you may want to do if things pull on your heartstrings is figure out your resources. So where do you start? My answer to this would be where do you want to start and what's your home like? You know. For some people, this might be one shelf in the medicine cabinet. It might be the winter socks. For somebody else, it might be the attic, the garage, the basement, the spare bedroom. It doesn't matter. But what matters is that you do something that you feel is going to get the ball rolling. And in order to get the ball rolling, it's really all about your time management. So whether you are a digital person or a paper person, um, having a moving on a dime mindset might mean there's a lot to do in your current space and place. So you might want to sit down and do a brain dump on paper or, you know, again, in a, in a, in a Word document or whatever you like. And think about what do you want to do in order to feel like you could move on a dime? When might you want to do this? Where's it going to go on your calendar? For how long do you want to work at it? I mean, is this something you want done in six months, one year, two weeks? I don't know how much stuff you have or what would make you feel good in terms of the volume that's left. You might want to think about you know, who could help you do this, who you might want to work for, who your support team is, and are you interested in giving yourself a deadline, you know, and maybe even a reward. So if maybe, you know, like I had an estimate this week for um, a woman who had her business for 25 years, and she's now getting ready to move. And there was a lot that wasn't going to be moved. So maybe the, you know, the reward of getting her office down to where she could move on a dime would be, you know, a week's vacation. I mean, that was 25 years of, you know, working in one office. So sometimes rewards are really worth the while. Um, and then, of course, think of your big why. And we've spoken about this at previous Lunch and Learns where, you know, for many people, um, they don't really like organizing and decluttering. Um, if you do, fantastic. But if you don't, you want to think about what's my big why here? Like, is my big why because I don't want to pay to live in New Jersey anymore? You know, I want to get to a warmer client. It might be because I know right now I can get the most amount of money Um and I think that financially, this is what I need to do. So think about what your why is, because that's really what's going to keep you going. And then think about as you're going through your whole uh, organizing on a dime. Oops, I guess I had a timer on that one. Go back there. Um, think about as you're going through this mindset, what your boundaries would be, you know, of your current inventory. So if we look at the electronics on the right, you know, what would your boundary be as if you had to move on a dime? If you've got five HDMI cords, are you okay with two? You want to get it down to, again, what you would pack in a box and pay a mover to move. You know, the picture on the left might have been something you did during COVID, but maybe now having two rolls of paper towels in your kitchen is okay and you don't need the dozen down in the basement. So individual questions. If you have in your home things from your family, and many people do, I go into houses all the time where maybe it's a senior couple or a senior person and they've raised the family, but there's still uh, leftovers, shall we say, from adult children, this is the time to say, hey, you know what? Uh, I just want to, for my own mindset, I want to get things down to where if I decided to move, I could. So now is the time to go through, you know, all of those bins up in the attic with your uh, primary, middle school, high school, and college papers, et cetera, et cetera. But talk to them about it. Give them a deadline. Maybe even decide to hold 
um, a family meeting or use it as a gift. You know, Mother's Day is coming up. Uh, maybe you guys spend a week down the shore during the summer. Maybe you could say, hey, listen, can we take an extra day and can you all go through the house with me and take what's yours? So just a little proactivity. Uh, think about your current precious, precious possessions. I'll never forget when my... Um, my nanny had a beautiful diamond ring for my papa, and then she became a widow, and she put her diamond ring in a safe deposit box, and she never wore it. She didn't want to wear it. I'm not sure why she didn't want to wear it, but she was widowed, and um, she knew it was going to be passed on to my mother, and then she decided, you know, what am I doing with this in my safety deposit box? I'll just give it to her now and let her enjoy it. So my mother was more than thrilled to have that ring and then reset it. So think about things that, you know, might be taking up space in your home that really are precious, but maybe not in its form. You know, maybe, you know, furniture pieces can be redone. Maybe jewelry can be redone. Maybe wedding dresses can be redone. Things like that, you know, t-shirt quilts, uh, things like that. So, so look at the items that you feel. I wouldn't move it the way it is now, but if I was to um, repurpose it, maybe I would rehome it in my next space. And are you in a situation where you might need to do a true home inventory? You know, if you have a lot of valuables in your home, if you have several homes, this might be the time where you either hire an outside professional to document everything and appraise everything, or it could be as simple as taking out your camera and taking a picture of everything and taking a video once a year so that, God forbid, there was any type of insurance claim that needed to be done, you would have a home inventory and you can just, you know, throw it on your laptop. Record keeping. This is something in everybody's homes that nobody really likes to do. But if you're going to have an organizing on a dime, organize on a dime mentality. You got to go through the files. You got to go through the papers. There's probably things you need to update, like, you know, passports, wills, uh, living wills, all that fun stuff. So if you're really thinking with this mindset, think about what do I need to do? You know, if you take prescriptions on a daily basis, now's when you get rid of the ones that you don't and maybe you write a list of what you do and make sure a loved one has that list in their wallet should something happen to you or you have a photograph on your phone and you put it under favorites and you call it medication. So record keeping, getting your papers in order, getting your vital documents updated should be part of the whole mindset of um, if you had to move on a dime, you got to get all that stuff in order. And when you do move, these are the kinds of things you want to keep on your person, you know, your valuables, your vital documents, et cetera. Furniture clutter. I mention this because, you know, whether I'm with junk luggers, it doesn't matter where I am. Most people have what I call furniture clutter. So now is the time to get the furniture out that you've been, you know, kicking to the basement or kicking up to the attic or kicking out to the garage and set your rooms up the way you really want. Like only keep the furniture pieces that you love. Make sure you have enough airspace that makes you feel comfortable and peaceful. Um, make sure the floor is safe. I always say when people are getting organized, the floor is not an option. That's a safety issue, but it's also a visual issue. So if you, there's a lot of things on cabinets or on floors, it kind of, it makes you feel a little cluttered. At least it makes me feel a little cluttered. Um, but think about the pieces that, that you would take and get rid of the ones that you don't. Um, in this process, you might want to think of how my, how might I be able to give back? So, um, the little picture in the middle is Joe. Uh, Joe was one of our truck drivers at the landfill. And I will never forget my first week of work at the Junk Luggers. Um, I was on one route with five stops in one truck all day. And we made three trips to the transfer station. And I myself in that one truck, we now have 10, dumped over three tons of garbage. 
And when you, if you ever have an opportunity to visit a transfer station before everything gets hauled away, you will see that an awful lot of the items that are dumped are not actually garbage. So, you know, there's furniture, there's clothes, there's, you know, food waste, you know, um, there's a lot that can be salvaged. So think about who your partners might be should you want to give back. If you have a storage unit, now might be the time to let it go. Um, most storage units can be cleaned out in a couple of hours and you will save hundreds if not thousands of dollars on things that you might have had trouble making decisions on. But if you make the decisions and you let it go and it's not going to be moved to the new place, now is the time to get rid of your storage unit. So I have these five top tips. It's start now because everybody says, well, when should I start this? Start now. It's all about the decisions. You have to make decisions because nothing is going to disappear unless you decide. Um, break it down. One box a day keeps the stress away. So if you want to think about this particular mindset, it can be really small. You know, use your phone, set a timer for five minutes and do one drawer in the kitchen. That's it. One drawer in the kitchen. Maybe you just do serving utensils and it's like, oh, wow, I've got, you know, nine spatulas. I'm OK with giving a few of these away. Um, have a Pinot packing party. That's another girlfriend's uh, motto and maxim. Get all the girls together, get a couple bottles of wine and just start doing this as a fun task. And then my fifth one is a picture paints a thousand words. So when you get a room to what you love and you think, you know what, this room is perfect. I would take this whole room, take a picture of it. So if this is what your living room you get your living room down to this amount of furniture and this amount of art and this amount of accessories. Take a picture. It's going to do a couple things. Um, and don't take the rug because that rug is wobbly and unsafe. So you now know if you have a moving estimate, you know exactly what to tell them. And you can use these pictures if and when you do move for placement and figuring out space in your next place. So I think um, having pictures is great. And this is actually a very good thing to do if you have young children or grandchildren, because you could take a picture of their room when it's cleaned up and you could put a picture up on the wall with a little piece of blue painter's tape. And once a week you could say, okay, time to clean up your room. And this is what it should look like when it's done. Do not be afraid to ask or hire help. There are tons of people out there um, don't judge yourself at all or be critical with yourself, but there's organizers, there's junk removal companies, there's uh, all kinds of places to sell right now, especially if you don't mind social media and apps. Um, lots and lots of donations, but the selling and the donating takes time and vetting. Um, there's, I know a great handyman, I know a great cleaning service, I know great moving companies, I know inspectors appraisal people. So if you need any resources, let me know. Um, but a lot of them are willing to just come and visit and give you information. So do not be afraid to ask. And we're almost ready for Q&A. So I want to invite you all to, oops, I think I forgot to change the top. I did. So it's not March, it's April next month. I think it, Deb, maybe you can look up the, um, the date. Oh, April 19th. Okay, the picture is correct. So join us next month for our Lunch and Learn, which is going to be about on how to love your garden organization and not just for spring. So that's next month, the 21st at 1230. You can register on my website. Um, it's also in my monthly newsletter and on social media. And Deb will put a, a link in the chat box in case you either don't get my monthly e-zine and would like it and maybe also a link for um, the next presentation. So this is how to find me. I'm very friendly. Do not hesitate to call me for any reason. That's my phone number. Those are my websites. And I really do two things. I'm all about eco-friendly uh, junk removal and donating and recycling. And also I do residential one-on-one -on -one organizing on the weekends. So I am gonna stop share, see all your lovely faces and see what you thought of this particular mindset. So please feel free to unmute yourself if you want to add a suggestion, a comment, a thought, a question. 
Hello, everybody. Good to see you all. I, for one, Jean Marie, this is Deb. Um, every Christmas, I pare down my um, uh, decorations and I've given ornaments to my, my kids now. So I think seasonally, as I change things out, is a good time to rethink what you have, what you need. Love that. Literally, what's in my garage for, you know, outdoor planting, what's, yes. you know, in my cabinets for having parties, you know, every time I... I, I try to think about, you know, am I going to use this? Am I keeping that number three candle for 10 more years until I need a 13? No, I'll buy it for a dollar, right? So. That's great. That's a good one. Yeah. And, you know, use the little tidbits of time. You know, maybe you decided to take a bath and while the water's being drawn, you could do, you know, a, a, a bathroom drawer in your vanity, you know, or maybe the pasta's cooking and you don't want to go too far and you got seven minutes, maybe you could open up that, you know, corner cabinet and do the top shelf of the Lazy Susan. So, um, you know, it's not like you have to set aside huge blocks of time. It's just more of having that mindset, you know, like maybe when you open up a, a closet door, let's say the closet is in your living room and it's, you know, you can't fit another coat in there, right? Because it's stuffed. You know, maybe the next time, you know, you come in from walking the dog, if you ha happen to have 10 minutes, you could just pluck out the coat you know you're definitely not going to wear for next winter. So it's really, you know, it's very much a mindset. Um, of course, you can put it into your time management and devote certain time. But I mean, there's, there's just these little pockets that we all have when we're living in our home where we could say, oh, you know what, let me have a look at that, you know, that jewelry armoire, I bet you I could do my bracelets in three minutes. So. Jimmy, this is Rachel. Uh, really good tips. And uh, it's funny, the last thing you said, I actually just started doing, but I'm in my kitchen and there's something on the stove and I'm like waiting for the water to boil. I've started cleaning out my, you know, utensil drawer. And so it's great. But thanks for those other tips. And I think you're right. Just like getting started seems to be the, the, first, the most important tip right now. So thank you. <laughs> Joe, thank you. <laughs> As Rita, are you trying to talk? I don't know if you're trying to talk. If you're trying to talk, I can't hear you. Hmm. And the microphone is not, uh, it doesn't look like you're uh, muted. Well, I think you're going to have to type whatever you're saying into the chat box because we definitely can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you are unmuted, but I don't. Yeah, you are unmuted, but we're not hearing you. The volume. Well, no, if she can hear us and it's not the volume. Yeah. All right. You guys are a little quiet today. Was it too much? In, I'm always afraid I'm I'm either not giving enough information or I'm giving too much information. Hi, Carleen. One minute. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I um. Well, I was really excited for this topic, especially um, the just to own what you truly love, use, and need. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we have been finally. I finally have been the two hours a day I've been finding the time wow. and yeah and and um a lot of it is because um you do you do I now get what you meant over the years with the stuff creates more clutter in your head like it creates more anxiety and clutter in your head because you're walking and you're seeing this and you're like why am I li still living with that? Why do I, I don't even like this picture. Like we kept saying, it's funny, I'll just say it, this is a good example. So in the dining room, and you know my house, we had these pictures and we have to, we're finally getting curtains and we were saying, okay, we're gonna get rid, we're sick of this rug. Like all of a sudden it seems like we're sick of everything. So we're sick of this rug, we're sick of these, these pictures. And we kept thinking, oh, we have all these pictures upstairs. You know, we're gonna just move them around. When we finally took the two hours to do it and mm -hmm. bring the pictures down, we realized 
gee, none of them really are going to work with the way we feel now and what the feeling that we want to have. Like, like you always say, when you walk into your space, you want to like love it. You want to be like, oh, I'm home. So that prompted us to say, okay, which of these things are we finally giving away? So we've had them, um, all these pictures, these paintings, and now we realize they're not as important. You know, we have a, a queen size bed frame. I was actually going to call you. And we've said, we've done the old, well, we might do this if we get another house. And now we're like, you know what? We have to live in the now. Yes. Right now, we don't yeah. know. So, oops. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you're looking to get rid of that, try, um, uh, uh, oh my gosh, organize. Oh, Buy Nothing Project Ridgewood. Buy Nothing Project Ridgewood? Okay. Yeah. Buy yeah. Nothing Project Ridgewood. We have a, and, and that's what we're going to start to do because, um, you know, I had a friend who was extremely organized. She was extremely organized, her house and everything. And she passed away suddenly. Like it was just uh. a freak thing from cancer. I mean, literally in two months, she was wow. diagnosed and then died. And I saw what her cousin and our two friends and myself went through. And her house was, she had a, like a two bedroom, two bath apartment. Yeah. And even they were in there going, well, what do we do with this stuff? And some of us took some things that really meant something to us, but watching bags of clothing go, yes. and I tried to get them to hire Eugene Marie, but they wanted, they were in this hole. They wanted to do it themselves to give her, you know, but just the process. Yeah, and it's a huge organized. endeavor. And it's, she was organized. And she was organized. You don't realize how much stuff is in a house or an apartment or a garage or a storage unit or a shed or anything until you start to clean it out. It takes out if you're if you're one person, it takes hours and hours and hours. Um, and it's overwhelming for most people. I've seen terrible, terrible things over the years, but you as I'm gonna I'm gonna be sexist. As as a woman, it it almost always falls on the women, and you know, it, it almost from a cultural perspective, it seems like that's our job. Um, and I don't know. I know I've mentioned this book many times before, but um, the Swedish art of death cleaning, because in Sweden, you know, that was on the bestseller, best New York Times bestseller list for a long time. But the concept is fantastic. It's the whole not, you know, mindset. I'm going to move on a dime. Well, move on a dime into the next world. Um, but what they do in Sweden is the the female in the home as she ages it is her job to make sure that she doesn't put that project like what happened to your girlfriend situation so that literally by the time you're ready to pass the majority of stuff is gone the decisions are made um you know i know a lot of funeral planners that it, and it's a hard sell but they try to sell people on the idea of a pre-planned funeral. I mean, the idea is fantastic. It's fantastic because now when somebody passes, you take all the stress away except for the grieving because there's no decisions to be made. You know, I remember my, my grandmother had a planned funeral. It was the best experience. And my mother who is still alive, will not even talk to me about what she's going to do when she comes out of the hospital for her next surgery. I mean, it's, she will not touch the topic. And I know what's going to happen. I'm going to end up trying to figure it all out when it could all be figured out in advance. So, you know, having that hard conversation, and I've had the hard conversation, but she won't have it back. But you know, planning that conversation is really crucial because you don't know, you don't know when things are going to happen. So, well, on that light note, <laughs> on that light note, it's one o'clock. Any more last minute questions? <laughs> all right. Well, I hope to see you all in April um, and have a great month. If you have any questions, just reach out. All right. Really? Thanks, everybody. Yep. Where are you going to be? What was it? You're going to be in Wyckoff Library or you were going to be in one of the libraries next yes. month? Or, where yes. Where is that? 
Uh, that's at the Wyckoff Library. I'm on a panel with two other organizers. Yeah. yeah. Um, hold on. I have to look it up. Because uh, you said we had to register. It, you know, it just go on the, I don't know if they have it up online yet. Just go to the Wyckoff Library website, the uh, adult programming. Um, it's just on my tiny little phone here. Okay, no worries. I, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. I just remembered you said it the last time. Um, yeah. Okay. And then you said call or get on Buy Nothing Ridgewood. The Buy the Nothing Project. So the Buy oh. Nothing Project, dot, it's either dot, it might be dot org or dot com is a wonderful national uh, platform where neighborhoods are using that to keep things it's out of the landfill. But and and I you and I don't think they charge money for it. It's to give things away for free. Um, but the idea is sustainability. And I know Ridgewood has an an admin person for it. So just look it up and you should be able to put the app on your phone, take a picture okay. of the bed, just throw it on there. And I'm gonna tell you in like five minutes you'll have three takers. Bye. Remember, if you want to see more videos on my organizing, productivity, and decluttering topics, hit the subscribe button and you'll be alerted when the next one is ready.